Oh my god. Is it coming through now? There's a bit of a delay I know in the chat, but I, I, um, it's not coming through. It shows it on OBS. Huh. Nothing. Is it going? Coming through. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate that. Sorry about that. I guess I'll start over then. <laughs> so, um, anyway, the, um, that major scale, one of the first, uh, scales I learned in, um, jazz, uh, uh my first jazz guitar lesson was just a major scale in G up here on the, on the 10th position. And that is, well, I already played it. You heard that. So it's just going back a str um, every three notes. Or every two notes. And then you just, again, practice that. Um, the other thing I was saying about the pick was... You didn't hear it. <laughs> it didn't come through. Um, when you're playing a, any any sort of scale or any riff or whatever, and you're going down... To the higher to the higher strings you're going up in pitch but down on the neck here you want to make sure that every time you change strings you're you're playing the pick down and then when you go backwards you're playing the pick up towards you that is instead of just alternate picking all the time where it's down up down up down up so that way you can um so that way it's uh that's how you get the speed really is being able to to play it like that I learned alternate picking first, so everything was always down, up, down, up. So every eighth note was like the downbeats were down and the upbeats were up. And it took me a while to kind of relearn that. So um, if you start thinking of it that way, <clears throat> then that's better. I think you'll 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 find that it it does uh, increase your speed quite a bit. Uh, the other thing is you can do this major scale here. Mm -hmm. And you can keep going with it. That play it down there. I try. I use that one, so it's all nothing is open. It's all fretted notes, and it gives you the biggest stretch. Um, and it's something you can. And then do this one here. Everybody knows this one, and then this one. Same scale, just a different positioning on how to on playing it and. It's some, I used to do that when there was times when I just I couldn't pick up the guitar. I didn't have time. I was busy working too much, and I needed. I just wanted to just keep the you know your dexterity up. And those those little practices are great to do. If you only have five minutes, you can pick up the guitar and just just do that kind of stuff. Um, let's see what else? Um, I'll I'll talk about this. I don't. I heard some of this stuff, some of it might be obvious, but I heard it later, because I'm primarily, I took some guitar lessons, but for the most part, I, I did, I was mostly self-taught, and then I went and took some jazz lessons later to, to kind of refine my, make sure I was on the right track, basically, and then, you know, I took, you know, many, many years of, uh, like, I think it was about four years of just private tutoring for orchestration and that sort of thing. But that wasn't really guitar related. Uh, that was just music in general. Um, the, uh, the holding the pick, something I didn't know until much later, the, the, the correct way, or supposedly the, this is the, what I was taught, uh, later I found out and I, I found it to be pretty helpful is that you kind of like just hold your wrist down. And then when you turn it over, wherever your thumb and index finger naturally come together, that's the best place to kind of, you can kind of see, put the pick there. And then, and you can play. Um, let's see. The other, another thing too, some of these guitar riffs, especially uh, runs like, 
something like that, you're using all four of your fingers. And we always, everybody learns the, the major, minor, pentatonic. And you can do a lot with that. But to use, if you want to start doing any of those kinds of runs, and also it helps with bar chords as well, is that if you find yourself struggling, or like the, the, the Sandman stretch, you can also just push your wrist under the guitar a little bit more, and you'll be surprised at how much how much more um, you know access you can get to the to the fingerboard just little moves like that things that I found out later like oh that's so simple but it it, it helps um, let's see what other piece of uh, practice things can I give you for for finger picking um, like the thumb pick I don't have one uh, with me I hear it Went over it a little bit last time, but just, I think, just practice the thumb and get used to how that feels. And if you know the Travis style picking thing, just do that slowly and get used to how this feels because it takes a, took me a good year just to even i was already playing everything else but just to want to to play more like chet atkins kind of stuff it took me a good year of just playing over and over again to finally get comfortable with these things and and as opposed to the flat pick here some people have asked like what kind of gauge pick you should use if you're starting out i mean experiment with different things I use these are custom picks, but I mean they're they're basically fender mediums, and that's the gauge that I find to be the easiest. I've tried um, the heavy jazz picks. The light picks don't work really at all unless you're just playing acoustic chords and stuff. But the uh, the, the heavy jazz picks are a bit much. I've I've tried those and they're just it's they, it's um it's it some of them are even thicker than the than the thumb picks so. I try to, uh, I say go with, go with that. Um, if you, uh, want to do the, you know, tucking up the pick and the index finger, do that kind of thing. Just carry a pick around with you and just kind of randomly throughout the day. I know it seems pretty obvious, but, and then it'll, it'll eventually just get used to it because I, trying to do it at first, I'd drop the pick and it'd go in the F hole and I'd have to shake it out and, and, uh, that's always fun but uh let's see what else uh what else can i can i talk about uh let's see oh this is not really a practice thing but one thing i, I don't have a strap on the guitar but one thing i took me at playing some live shows to to find out the hard way is that with the strap around it you can imagine there's a strap here. You want to put the, the cable through the strap and then around into the jack, into the output jack, because I've done it several times where I forget to do that, step on the cable, whoop, <laughs> step on the cable, and the all of a sudden the sound is gone, and you wonder what, what happened. Um, these, uh, I can't show it to you because the guitar's plugged in, but they're, uh, another piece of advice, these uh, cables is they um they make these um quick it's not a quick disconnect but it has a a little shield inside by the by the jack that when you pull it out it stops it cuts the sound and that way you don't have to remember to you know you want to switch guitars or you're done and you forget to turn the amp off or something like that it doesn't buzz and, and you forget to put you know click your tuner on or something like that um or if you don't use a pedal tuner and you use a clip on um that can be that can be helpful let's see these are just little things that i've i've learned let's see what other kind of practice ideas i can give you um playing if you do the 
whether you're tucking your pickup or however you're 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 doing finger picking, practice playing chords, just normal nines and that sort of thing, and picking them with your with your fingers. That's kind of like comping, like like a piano, you know. I love this little riff. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, let's see, what else can I... The rockabilly finger-picking thing. Um, that's more... I know a lot of people have covered that. Um, you know, Setzer talks about it in his Hot Licks video. It's a little older if you can find it. I think it's on YouTube. You can, you can look at that. Where he just talks about how you kind of just have the notes droning back there. Whatever key you're playing in. You still want to kind of, I, I find, like, not just slop over every string, but at least be defined on the bass note. So you're really just picking between the two bottom strings. One and the five, one and the five. You know, whether it's one, five, one, five, or one, five, like that. Depending on the chord that you're hitting. I find myself usually bouncing. Bouncing back and forth between the, the two strings quite a bit. Sometimes I'll... And that just comes from playing with the thumb pick quite a bit. I got used to at least bouncing between the, the one and the five. Usually you're just going one, five octave, one, five octave, even with, even with that. Um, um, yeah, I mean, that that's, those are the, those are some of the the, th the go-to things that I do when I just need to warm up and and practice a little bit, um, and then I practice songs. Uh, it's you can practice scales all day, but putting it into context with an actual song by practicing the songs, and I, I definitely recommend learning um, solos. Just learn guitar, so pick your favorite song, whatever it is. And just learn the solo at note for note or as close as you possibly can. And that will help you with dexterity. It'll help you with feel. It'll help you with uh, the timing. And it, and, it will, and it will help you with ideas, especially if you can see and understand where, how the solo is structured, where it's, where it's coming from. Did they use a pentatonic scale or are they using a major scale or bouncing back and forth, major, minor? And you start to see the patterns and how everything gets connected by, by just doing it. Uh, one of the first first uh, songs that I learned in one of my first guitar lessons was um, Whole Lot of Love, Led Zeppelin. And it was just a basic... The reason why he chose that was because it was a simple chord progression. And you could... And taught me the pentatonic scale and that you can use it to solo over and get used to kind of coming up with your own riffs and coming up with your own timing um, and starting to, to improvise. And that just takes time, practice, and eventually you'll, you'll, um, you'll get there. You, if you can, I don't know if, if there are any players out there that see this. If there are any local, if you don't play live already, if there are any and you want to, if there are any local blues jams or anything like that, go and do that. I used to do that quite a bit. And it's fun. It's fun. I still do occasionally. Um, if I, uh, if I have the time. Um, yeah, that would be, uh, that would be my advice on for, for improvisation because it's simple. Most of it's one, four, five, occasionally like a two, five, one progression or something like that. But it's, it's all pretty straight ahead. And that's, uh, it's a great way to uh, get used to 
playing in front of people and and also um you know, getting used to your scales and and uh what works what doesn't work because you'll try things and you'll think oh i can do this and then you try it it doesn't really work you figure that out as you go and another thing is i know it's a basic thing but it does help stretch your fingers and that's just to get all your all your fingers working yeah really easy stuff just to if you don't have a lot of time again you can um uh, you can just grab the guitar real quick and then when you have time if you don't know what to do and you're like well what, what should i do learn a new song just pick something it doesn't matter if you're interested in um like the rockabilly finger picking thing uh let's see two hip gotta go for the stray cats is probably a, a really good one i would say that's that's a great one to learn because it's right there most of the tune is that um let's see what else i'm trying to think of like an older song that has has that in there well that's all right mama that's that's a perfect one to learn and all all of those um my baby left me all the early early elvis stuff is is a great great thing to learn if you want to learn um chord progressions more complicated stuff like more jazz substitutions and jump blues and that sort of stuff i'd say uh songs like uh if anybody's heard of Sophronia b by calvin booze that's that's a fun tune relatively easy but has a has some interesting changes um that's not a typical one four five um let's see okay uh the other thing too is practicing i practicing riffs in different keys that's something that i didn't do for a while and realized and then you go oh yeah i can play in any key and you go and you start trying to do a riff in another key and you kind of get lost and you you, you think you can you're gonna do it and you and fall on your face but simple stuff for the most part it's easy to do in in different keys but especially if you're doing something like this where you're all over the the, the neck with all these chords it's good to kind of get used to practicing that in a different in different keys And open, open stuff like this. That um, something I neglected too for a while was just playing open, open strings. And I played in a couple. I played well, the bass back there. I played bass in a band for a while, and uh, we did some trio, like two acoustic guitars, upright bass, and it was a like a lot of bluegrass kind of kind of stuff. And watching the guitar players play a lot of open open stuff and flat picking obviously i'm sure people have heard of billy strings that i mean that that's a whole other <laughs> another level um but uh yeah this is my that's my kind of advice is the the scales as i think of more things i'll, I'll try to do it i'm going to try to do this stream every saturday in between the videos so if i even if i don't get a video up i'll do this not really sure on what time Sometimes I have shows and stuff at night on Saturday and it's tough, so it might be Sunday, but I'll, I'll try to make it Saturday. I might do it earlier. If more people start watching, then and I'll make sure I have my mic turned up next time. Uh, gotta have the checklist, right? And I'll try to... Uh, it might be a little earlier, or or if it works out better and more people start saying hey can you do it a little bit later I'll do, I'll, i can try to do it a little later so how long have we been going now about 25 minutes this is the longest i've done it <laughs> um let's see 
let's let's uh I'll go over a song a little bit. I'll just kind of stream here for um, try to go for another ten minutes or so. And next time, and if there's anybody out there watching, I can't tell if anybody's watching because it doesn't sh it the uh, the window doesn't show me unless somebody says something in the chat. Um. Mm. Mama, I'm trying to think of a good tune. What would be good? Um, well, one tune I really enjoy playing uh, is um, Forty Nine Mercury Blues" by uh, the Setzer Orchestra, and it's got this cool guitar riff. Here we go. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> Glad to know people are watching. Really simple, but just sounds really cool with the upright bass slapping and the guitar, the drums playing the train beat. And the, uh, the rhythm just... Pretty straight ahead one four five thing in the in the beginning for the verses, but then the the um, uh, bridge is really interesting. Walks up here to the D nine, and then he does this uh, same kind of move as two hip gotta go when he's walking when going back to the one, and then he does this that's all right mama thing. Um, then G sharp minor uh, seven flat five, and then uh, C seven C sharp seven sharp nine to the two raise five. And the uh, the turnaround or the end of the verse into one verse into the next is has this thirteen, this A thirteen. And then when he does the solo, he just extends it a bit, puts the third on the top there. Something like that. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's just a fun, fun solo to play. I want to say that that, the first part of that solo, I haven't heard the original in a long time. Uh, Rock and Roll Ruby, Johnny Cash, one of his first, first tunes, I believe. Um, I want to say that's the same solo that he, well, I know Setzer plays the same exact solo in his Rockabilly Riot um, uh, album. And then the second half of it is like just him doing something else. Um, but yeah, that's a fun tune to play. Uh, what, what else we got that's, that's fun? Uh, a couple of them I put up, the Bally High thing. That, that was, that's always fun to play. Um, Paperback writer as an instrumental that was just coming up with the, the the drummer and I came up. We loved he he is a big fan and I am too. He but he's a huge fan of the Ventures, and the Ventures have a great album. If anybody you know is interested, is the Live in Japan album. Forget the year. I should I should know it. It's it's a uh, '60s. I I should know it. He's gonna kill me. <laughs> um. Anyway, it's but it's Live in Japan and. It has a great 
live version of their instrumental of I Feel Fine by the Beatles. And so we're like, oh, that would be great, with, but with Paperback Writer instead of I Feel Fine. And if you listen to that, you can see kind of where we got the idea from. They use they use the Fender basements too, I believe. I think they had the old the older one with the 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 big fifteen in the middle. Um. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Uh, what else do we I like to play? I mean, we all sorts of different different songs. We do this uh, hustle is on kind of. That's a fun little jump. Jumping Blues, I think, uh, uh, T-Bone Walker, T-Bone Walker tune, great stuff, if you guys aren't familiar with him. Uh, we kind of speed it up a bit and toast on some uh, some other tunes toward, uh, yeah, towards the end where we throw in, um, like, a lot of blues bands do it. I've always liked the riff, the one o'clock jump. Um, let's see. All right, well, I guess I'm trying to think if there's any other, uh, I'm sure something will come to me the minute I stop streaming, <laughs> uh, uh, practice ideas. Um, practicing, learning some of those chords, some of the other the the more jazz chords oh that's something too playing not instead of playing full bar chords where you can just play part like three or four notes um can be nice when you're backing somebody up or when you're playing yourself and it helps to keep you're still implying the chord is still there but you're not it's not so loud so when you're singing you can hear your voice and the audience can hear your voice you're not getting drowned out by you know by the guitar so let's see so you can play just a partial chord instead of playing a full a7 you can play it like this like that you see that um and the same thing with the with the you move that same shape down here, and you have your minor seven. So that's why you get this movement. This. That and all. Yeah. And instead of playing a full minor seven, just bar it like this. Or just minor. Um, what's the other one I was thinking? Oh, using your thumb, too, to hit the bass notes. Play it like this. You've seen people do this. Um, you can do this for, uh, well, I do that in the, in the Chet Atkins video where I show to keep that, keep that open string. But sometimes it's good to just, uh, I do it sometimes if my hand starts to cramp up or something, I can give myself a break from some of those, uh, some of those bar chords. Uh, yeah, the another way to play that some uh, uh, what was I trying to say here? Um, the the six chords, like you see this all the time, right? Um. Sometimes you want to play that, and you're playing in a different key. You're up here, or here, or whatever. And you want to play it, but you want the, the, the chord to be lower in pitch. And you can go down here and play a C6 like this. Or that's a little muddy. Um... Another way that you can do it is this. Kind of splitting the difference. Just 
just like the minor. Minor six. We raise that little finger up. You're getting the third. And then, of course, you have your nines, like this. And you just kind of, you know, mix it up a little bit. And of course, you have these nines here, and there's also this one, too. You're just, it's uh, different voicings, different inversions, whatever terminology you you want to use and that can create a nice sound a swell um let's see I'm trying to think of some other some other uh practice ideas but um that's uh that pretty much uh i think cover it for today yeah we uh we're on 36 about 36 minutes in so i hope everyone enjoyed uh if you saw the chet atkins video i uh, hope the mr sandman and i hope uh everyone enjoyed that's that's watching i hope you guys are enjoying it and hope you can learn something and again if you guys have any questions leave a comment, feel free to reach out in the chat. Um, we can uh, talk about whatever you guys want in the, uh, if you have any musical questions or guitar questions or whatever, uh, let me know. We can go over, uh, I used to uh, set up guitars too for a job for a while. As a couple of little things. Gretches are, are, if anybody is interested in Gretches, they can be a little finicky uh you're always tinkering um the new ones are pretty good the fender since fender took over distribution and i want to say 2003 or four something like that they've been fantastic you can order a gretch like i'm not endorsed by them or anything i wish but i'm not um you can just uh get them right out of the box i mean they they come right out of the box sometimes almost in tune and they're right you can pretty much take it to the gig and play it. It's not perfect. You still need to, you know, the action's probably a little on the high side, but generally speaking, it's pretty, they're pretty good. And it, and I got this one. This is not a Fender. This is a, this is pre-Fender. Uh, this is a two, this is a 99. It's not, none, none of the stuff I have is vintage, but, uh, yeah, the vintage ones I used, I've looked at They're They're, they're very fragile. Um, they're the uh, a lot of the a lot of them the fingerboards are starting to deteriorate the way they made the materials out of the frets back then they literally will just pop out of the of the neck and you can only do so much with them to to get them to get them playable and the electronics usually have to be completely redone all the wiring is deteriorated and 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 everything so i i just say just for the cost i mean they're i want to say close to 8 grand 10 grand some of them um you, you just get a new one <laughs> there's no and, and the and the the uh the other ones the like the electromatic they used to have synchromatic and i think it's just electromatic now those are good too those are pretty good and the only they all have rosewood fingerboards so that's the one of the biggest difference the wood's a little um i want to say it's a little a little dense a little more thick a little thicker as far as the dimensions between the top here, so it does they don't resonate quite as quite as well. Um and but I've if you excuse me, want to get it to sound like a like anything like this, just take the, the pickups that it comes with and get some T B Jones or something and put them in there. And they'll I mean, it'll it'll be just as just as uh just as good and save you a lot of a lot of dough and they've come out with some pretty good ones these days so um anyway uh all right i will 
see you guys next time. We'll do the try to do this again next week. Uh, we'll stick with four o'clock for now, and I will put up a message about it probably Thursday, just to, just to give like two days or whatever before I uh, put that up, and then I'll have the next video ready hopefully soon, and see you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody.